Judaism holds the distinct characteristics of two important features. It is a religious belief system with its own adherents and customs, along with having a tight and close connection to the ethnicity and geography of those from Israel, the Jewish people. If one was to attempt to commit to their Jewish heritage, there would be two overall temptations. Not to follow Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as prominently believed by Gentiles, and to adhere to the doctrines not only contained in the Tanakh, but in addition to what is referred to as the Talmud. While we will be briefly examining the man named Yeshua at the end of this segment, we will be addressing one of the sacred sources of the Jewish religion first. The Talmud, otherwise known as the Oral Torah, is claimed to have its origins from Moses, from Mount Sinai, after he had received from God the written Torah, being the first five books of the Bible. It is alleged that this was carried down alongside of the written scriptures as an oral component. This tradition was supposedly challenged come the turn of the 1st and 2nd century, with the Jews entering into exile after the destruction of the Temple of Jerusalem in 70 AD, along with the failed rebellion of Simon bar Kokhba. It was after this time that the oral traditions were written down in the 5th century in what is popularly known as the Babylonian Talmud although there is also a Jerusalem Talmud that is not as readily accepted as the other edition. This series of writings include things such as commentaries and instructions that were supposedly extracted from the scriptures, along with other aspects in connection to Semitic heritage. Now we will not be getting too deep into the specifics of the Talmud in this segment, however, we will be emphasizing the authority that it has been given within Judaism through a series of citations and clips, and then showing from a biblical perspective how this set of writings is antithetical to a true Jewish faith. To start, we need to see how important the Oral Torah really is to the Jews, and to start we will read some quotes about it from Judaism's current trusted sources and then some videos from accredited rabbis. So let's get started with our first quote. Handbook of Jewish Thought by Aria Kaplan Chapter 9 Just as we depend on tradition for the accepted text, vocalization, and translation of the Torah, so must we depend on tradition for its interpretation. The written Torah cannot be understood without the oral tradition. Hence, if anything, the oral Torah is more important of the two. Since the written Torah must appear largely defective unless supplemented by the oral tradition, a denial of the oral Torah necessarily leads to the denial of the divine origin of the written text as well. Therefore, one who does not believe in any part of the oral Torah is considered a non-believer in all respects. The oral Torah is therefore the basis of God's covenant with Israel. It is even more dear to God than the written Torah. As continued in chapter 12, since the Talmud was accepted by all Israel, it is the final authority in all questions of Torah law. Since such universal acceptance is a manifestation of God's will, one who opposes the teachings of the Talmud is like one who opposes God and his Torah. The Written Torah and the Oral Torah by My Jewish Learning The Oral Torah is crucial to the normative practice of Judaism today. 
The prescriptions for daily life found in the Bible are typically cryptic, vague, and even contradictory. Some are completely indecipherable on their own. The Oral Law expounds at great length on these sources, providing a vast literature that translates scriptural sources into a guide for daily living. For Orthodox Jews, the obligations recorded in the Oral Law are as binding as those recorded in the Written Torah. As such, the Oral Law has the statutes of a direct divine command among Orthodox Jews. Why the Talmud is the most important text in Judaism by Penny Dunner on the Algeminer.com. It is always assumed that the most important text of Judaism is the Torah, but while it is true that the Torah is uniquely revered as the essence of our faith identity, and elevated above all other texts as the unadulterated word of God, the primary text of Judaism is undoubtedly the Talmud. Now since we have read some quotes concerning the authority of the Talmud to the scriptures according to Judaism, we should hear what some of the most accredited Jewish theologians have to say about their traditions, and then we will state our observations. People unfortunately artificially make the barrier, there's an artificial restriction of revelation to writing. And there's an assumption that if it's not in the book, it wasn't given by God. And I would say, who says? Who says that God is not able to speak to us without putting it in writing? Now, we'd have to think about why God does have some of his revelation in print and some in writing. That's a question worth asking. But just to say axiomatically that if it's not in the book, it never happened, is really artificial and absurd. Obviously, God is capable of communicating with us in many ways, not just in writing. So to artificially restrict God's revelation to what we see in the book, I would refer to as bibliolatry. Bibliolatry. It's really making idolatry out of the Bible. It's saying that this is all we have. All we have is the Bible. It's putting an undue, inappropriate limitation on God's revelation to simply the words in the Bible. In addition to uh, the 24 books of the Torah, we have what we call an oral tradition. In Hebrew, it's called Torah Sheba'al Peh, the Torah that comes by heart. And this is very uh, commonly thought to be the rabbinic law. But it's not at all rabbinic. The rabbinic law is a component of the oral tradition, but it's not really the oral tradition. The, the oral tradition was laws, interpretation, handed down by God to Moses. In other words, it has the same authoritative stature as the written law. It just was not written. It was handed down from generation to generation, and it is called Halacha Moshe Misinai, a law from Moses on Sinai, passed down. With everything that we have gone over, one would have to ask what is the biblical basis for this? In short, the Law of Moses makes sure to specifically warn against having another authority outside of what God has permitted through his scriptures. In which case, let's read said verses. Deuteronomy 4 verse 2 Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Deuteronomy 12 verse 32 
What thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Not once is there a reference to Moses giving specific direction outside of what was written in the inspired scriptures, and the lack of record to support said oral tradition makes it impossible to verify how old even these traditions are. You can see how the laws demonstrated in the scriptures are bloated and abused if you look up the My Jewish Learning article concerning Exodus 23 verse 19 and Deuteronomy 14 verse 21, where the scriptures say, Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. The article takes pride in detailing that the Talmud gives even more restrictions, and in direct quote says, the oral Torah explains that these verses indicate a vast array of practices, including the complete ban on eating any kind of land animal with any kind of dairy product, the requirement of separate sets of cooking equipment and serving utensils for meat and dairy, and the obligation to wait some period of time after eating meat before eating dairy. None of these rules would have been obvious from the Torah alone. This not only shows the direct abuse of Moses' law, but gives credibility to the ministry of Jesus Christ in multiple instances surrounding these types of practices including what he said against the temple leaders in the first century, saying in Matthew 23 verses 2 to 4, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say, and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Here's another passage in direct response to similar traditions arbitrarily placed over the Word of God. Mark 7 verses 5 to 8. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why walk not thy disciples to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashen hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. What can be done is verify what the Talmud says based on the authority of the scriptures, as 1 John 4 verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. This channel will continue to address the traditions that Jesus called out in the first century, as this ministry continues to redirect our Jewish friends from the bondage of dead works and false religion into the arms of our living Messiah.